Tuning a 3D printer in the past used to be a painfully difficult process, but a handful of improvements within the recent years has made this process relatively easy even for machines running Clipper. Today, we're going to fine tune this freshly unboxed Neptune 4 Plus and take our print quality from this to this. So stay tuned. This video is brought to you by Elegoo. Right now until July 21st, you can save big site-wide on all of Elegoo's 3D printers with their Prime Day sale. You can even pick up the machine I'm tuning in this video for just $326 US dollars. There's also huge savings over on Amazon for all Elegoo products, so head to the link in the description and help support the people who support this channel. Before we do anything, let's make sure the eccentric wheel nuts on the printer are adjusted properly. There's one adjustable wheel on the inside of each Z-axis, two on the underside of the extruder carriage, and three under the bed. Tighten the nuts on each axis until all the wheels make good contact with the aluminum frame and no longer spin freely. This step is crucial, so take some time here and try and get them all perfect. Too tight, and the pressure can make the axis hard to move and create indents in the rubber wheels. Too loose, and they'll introduce play in the axis that no amount of tuning will compensate for. The next critical tip is to give your removable bed a good scrub with a sponge and some soapy hot water. This removes any grease or oils that may have accumulated during manufacturing and handling. That grease and even grease from your fingers creates an interface layer that separates the first layer from the PEI coating that it would otherwise stick flawlessly to. Clean the excess water off your build plate with a clean towel and avoid touching it at all costs even during print removal. Of course, we have to start by running a few test prints while the machine is untuned so we can do a comparison later on. Here's the results of our untuned test prints. And just to be clear, this print quality is fine. It's actually pretty good right out of the box, but there's a few things we can fix. First is this stringing. Temperature and retraction tuning should take care of this. There's some sloppy overhangs on this helix torture test here. Again, temperature tuning should take care of this and a slight amount of over extrusion is making our top surfaces a little rough. Flow rate is the culprit here. Okay, with that out of the way, we can move on to tuning. The first thing I do with a new printer, regardless of brand or age of the machine, is check for new firmware. Let's head over to the Elegoo website and look for any updates. Here we can see a few different firmware versions. We can grab the newest one from the top of the list here. You can also read through the change log by hovering over this icon. There's some improvements to input shaping, default camera support, and a handful of bug fixes. Definitely worth the upgrade. All you need to upgrade your firmware is a USB drive and a micro SD card. These should have been included with your printer. It's important to format the SD card and thumb drive as FAT32 with the default allocation size. This ensures your printer can read them correctly. We'll use the thumb drive to update the main board and the SD card to update the screen. So drop the Elegoo update directory folder on the thumb drive and the UI.tft file on the micro SD card. Now we can head over to the printer. Using the touch screen, find the about machine menu. Here you can see your current version. If your version is below 1.2.2.64, you'll have to first update using the fixed files provided with this update. Insert your thumb drive and hit the up arrow button at the bottom of the screen. The update will install and after some time your machine will reboot. Now for the screen. Power down the machine and undo the four screws on the back of the touch screen. Inside is a micro SD card slot. Insert your SD card. 
Now power the machine back on and the update happens automatically. And when it's complete, it will say update successful. You can power the machine down, remove the SD card and reassemble the screen housing. Now we're all up to date with some added features and bug fixes. Once that's done, we should put our printer on the network. If you have a wireless network, you can navigate to the network menu and enter your network credentials. If you have a wired connection nearby, just plug in an ethernet cable. Once that's done, reboot the machine and head back to the About Printer menu. Take note of your machine's IP address, as we can use this later to send files directly over Wi-Fi. While we're here, let's go to the Advanced Settings menu and turn on the Professional Leveling mode. This increases the probe locations to 111. We can also level the bed now too. Tighten all six bed knobs and enter the leveling menu. We should set the Z offset here too. Using a piece of paper, lower the nozzle until you can feel some very slight friction. Doesn't have to be perfect, we'll fine tune this later. Now we can start the manual leveling. Press the auxiliary leveling button. From here, we can start adjusting our six knobs. Adjust from the front to the back several times. I like to do three or four rounds just to make sure. The key here is to make sure the friction you feel on the paper is the same above all six knobs. The result is a pretty level build plate and means your auto leveling will have to compensate less. Once you're happy with your manual leveling, you can exit this menu. On the Neptune series of machines, it should auto prompt the bed probing sequence. Here it'll probe your bed in a grid and build a mesh of your bed's flatness. Your machine will compensate for any unevenness. Once that's done, we're sent back to the Z offset page. Here we can fine tune it a little more. A tip here is to lower the hot end until your paper buckles when you try and push it under the nozzle then lift it up by 0.01 millimeters. We can adjust this during printing as well, so don't be too critical. Don't forget to hit the save icon in the top right corner. Now we can move on to resonance and PID tuning. Both of these have auto calibrate wizards in the advanced menu. Simply run the X and Y input shaping commands and your print head and bed will oscillate and build a resonance profile. This is then used to cancel out said resonance during printing. Super important on a machine with a heavy bed like this one. Once that's done, I recommend running the PID calibrate too. This makes sure that your hot end is heating up and remaining at temperature perfectly given its current environment. Now that we've taken care of that, we can start fine tuning our slicer settings. Head back to the Elegoo site and grab the provided Orca Slicer from the downloads page. Orca Slicer is the best slicer I've used to date with support for a ton of different 3D printers and some awesome calibration tools. We can also directly communicate with our Elegoo printer through Orca Slicer. Hit the Wi-Fi button here next to your printer's name and enter your machine's IP address. Now that that's connected, we can directly access the machine via the machine tab up top here. Let's go over some basics of the Orca Slice workspace. There's four main tabs. First is the prepare tab. This is where you'll import your models and adjust your printing parameters. On the left hand side, you'll find your machine, filament and print settings. Once you're happy with your settings, you can hit slice and you're automatically taken to the next tab, which is the preview tab. This is where you can preview your sliced G-code. You can look through for any rogue overhangs and print issues. You can adjust settings here too, but you'll need to hit the slice button again to preview the updated G-code. Once you're ready to print, you can export the G-code file or send it directly to your printer. 
The next tab is the device tab. This is where you can access the interface of your printer. You can also type your printer's IP address directly into any web browser on the same network, but having this right in the slicer just keeps things a little more organized on your desktop. Here you can monitor temperatures, check printing status, look through old print jobs, and access the stored config files for your machine. Take note of where this section is here, as we'll be coming back to it a few times to update settings. Finally, there's a project tab. And I'll be honest with you, I never use this tab, but if you want to save and recall models, this is where you'd do it. Once your machine is connected and responsive, we can navigate to the Calibrate button on the top toolbar in Orca Slicer. This menu provides us with a handful of options, but let's start with flow rate as this can affect all the following tests. The flow rate test is automatically laid out and configured, so all we have to do is send it to our printer. Prior to running this test, make sure your filament profile has the flow rate set to 100. This just makes it a little easier to do some of the simple calculations later on. Flow rate is super important as over or under extrusion can have cascading effects on print quality. From sloppy top surfaces, stringing and blobbing, and poor part tolerances and clearance. After the test print is complete, we can compare the results. We're looking for a very smooth top surface with no gaps. Over extrusion looks like this, with ridges where the molten plastic is forced out around the nozzle, and under extrusion looks like this, gaps between your solid infill and perimeters. Find the best looking one and lean a bit on the over extruded side as we'll run a second test to dial it in. For me, the zero flow rate square has some over extruding. And the minus five square is almost perfect, but there's some very minor gaps right here. So we know our perfect value is going to be in between zero and minus five flow rate. The second pass flow rate test generates nine negative flow rate squares between zero and minus nine. So I'll leave my flow rate at one and load that test next. For me, I think the perfect value is between minus three and minus four flow rate. So I'll opt for minus 3.5. I'll move the decimal place over twice and subtract that from one. This gives me a new flow rate value of 0 0.965. Now I could enter this in my filament settings, but I'm going to take it a step further and adjust my rotation distance in the printer config file. All I have to do is take my current rotation distance and figure out what 3.5% of that is. To do this, I'll just move the decimal place over twice and times this by my current rotation distance. Since rotation distance is the circumference of your extruder gear, increasing this number decreases the amount of filament extruded and subtracting will increase the amount of filament extruded. In my case, I want a little less plastic extruded, so I'll add this to my rotation distance. Don't forget to click save and restart. Now my correct flow rate for standard PLA that I print most often is stored directly on the machine. Next we can move on to tuning, pressure advance. Under the calibration tab in Orca Slicer, select pressure advance. This setting slows down the feeding of filament around corners which makes them sharper and can lead to better detail retention in your prints, cleaner seams and better retractions. Send the test print to your printer. On the test, we can see here that the corner bulges out with zero pressure advance. And as the value increases, it becomes sharper. Then it starts to soften the corner too much before under extruding the corner completely and leaving a gap. Find the sharpest corner and measure from the base to that point. Times that distance in millimeters by the step value from the test, which should default to 0.002. Head back into the printer.cfg file and look for the pressure advance value under the extruder heading. Adjust the value and hit save and restart. Now we can move onto temperature tuning. 
Again, head to the calibration menu in Orca Slicer and select temperature. Select the filament you'd like to tune for and run the temperature tower. Look for areas where the print has good surface quality and was able to print the overhangs and small features of the tuning tower successfully. We can then save this in our filament profile. Also, for initial layers, I like to add 5 degrees. This allows the filament to become a little more fluid and flow into all the nooks and crannies of the textured PEI sheet for better bed adhesion. Finally, we have my mortal enemy retraction settings. Load up the retraction tuning tower and send it to the printer. Again, we're looking for the cleanest area of the test print with the best looking seam and the least amount of stringing. Measure from the base of the print in millimeters to the best section and times that amount by the retraction step value of the test. This will give us the best retraction distance. We can head to the machine menu under the extruder tab and enter that value here. And that's it, we're all updated and tuned. Now we can print models like this with ease. Finally, let's look at our side-by-side -side comparison models. We've dealt with the stringing thanks to our temperature and retraction settings. We've fixed the rough top layers with the help of flow rate calibration. And the overhangs on this double helix torture test look so much better. I hope this video helped you in your never ending 3D printer tuning adventure. If you have any questions or tips that I didn't mention, leave them in a comment below. And as always, thanks for watching and happy printing.